Hey everybody, it's your buddy Chopadong, uh, DFSArmy.com, one-stop shopping, all sports, all tools, all coaches, everything, one price. And down there in the link you'll see the DFSArmy.com and you'll also see a coupon code CHOPCHOP that discounts memberships 20%. That's the VIP membership that opens up the Slack coaching, which is where I get to interact with you one-on-one -on -one or in small groups or whatever and help you become a better player. That's the goal. And I want to explain something today that's going to walk through a little bit of the website, uh, hopefully in an area showing you how, uh, what's in my head. I'm, I've, I've run into quite a few new members today alone, I mean several today, that all have the same theme. They're coming back off of the pandemic or whatever, and sports are starting to open up, and they're saying, hey, I want to get better. I want to teach, or I want to learn uh, take the game more seriously and learn what a lot of the really, really good players are doing and maybe build a bankroll and maybe turn this into something significant. I don't know if maybe these guys have lost their jobs or what and are trying to see if the DFS waters are for them. Uh, that's not up to me to judge. But what I'm trying to tell you is we can show you how to become a better player in whatever sport it is that you enter. And the way that I have been talking to these guys is laying out a process, saying... Back in the day, uh, years and years ago, when we first started as a company, we didn't have a lot of tools. We had to make our own, and we did them in the eye of what we did as a research process. So you've got to develop your own research process. And in that research process that I developed for myself and others developed for themselves, we were really, in, in my opinion, at least what I was trying to do, was predict the industry gurus that I respected. I was trying to predict what they were going to key on for their best plays of the day. What research was pointing them in that direction, landing on those players? How could I emulate that? How could I discover what they were looking at? And, and then could I arrive on the same plays before they did? Because I, you know, I would close out my windows. I would not look at anything I wanted to read, any articles or anything that day, until I did my research and had my list of players. Say for NFL, I had you know, three quarterbacks, five, six running backs, ten wide receivers, three or four tight ends, three or four defenses, whatever, that I thought were going to be in the best spots that week. And then I would go look and see how much of that player pool that I developed matches up with the other industry gurus that I liked to read, uh, podcasts I like to listen to, you know, whatever. And that worked with all sports, MLB, NBA, NHL, PGA, whatever. I was looking for those key plays. And once I had a research process that started me down that path and landed on those plays to where my player pool was fairly identical to theirs, I gained confidence. And I knew that whatever happened, I was on very, very good plays. Then if I saw guys that they did not have that I did, I would ask them, what about this guy? And I would come in respectfully, and I would come in uh, with data prepared. I wouldn't just say, hey, do you like this player or this player better? Do you like player A or player B? Or which ones, A and B or C and D? Which two? Now, I don't ask those questions. That's lazy. I don't do that. I want to learn. I want to grow. I want to get better. So I am asking you questions, leading questions that are backed with data to see if I can get you to agree with my guy. I'm not arguing with you. I'm not going to be a dick, but I'm going to see if I can get you to agree with my guy. Do, does this make sense? Am I on the right track? Am I, uh, you know, spotting a good play here? And it's either a yes or a no. It's a, yeah, it sounds great. And I'm on different guys or no. Wow. Thank you for pointing that out. Whatever the case was, whatever the, the conversation was, it helped me become a better player. It helped me learn. It helped me befriend a lot of these guys that would then be more willing to help me out. Because if you see the guy in the, in the forums or whatever that says, hey, this player, or that player, and, and nobody talks to that guy. And I'm sorry if you're that guy. You've always got an opportunity to learn. Nobody talks to that guy because he's here for the, he's not really necessarily here for the right reasons unless he just doesn't know how to ask the questions. And that's fine too. Everybody can learn. But the guy that comes in that says, what about this player, or this player? Because this player's on your list and this player's not on your list. And for the player that's not on your list, I see that he, you know, averages eight targets and he is in a high over under game for the week and whatever. You've got data backing that up. And, and now you can have an actual conversation about numbers and about research and about how you found that play. And then for names that were on these guys' player pools or lists that were not in my player pool, I had cheat sheet notes. I could go read those notes off to the side and then start looking at, well, 
how about that? That the the coach is telling me why he likes a player, and if I don't get the answer that I like, it's not backed with data or a strong opinion. I would then go ask that coach, why did you like this guy? This wasn't clear. I would like to explore this or explain this. I'd like to find the numbers that you found. What makes you like this guy? And then I can test the coach a little bit and see if he really knows his shit or if he is really just kind of picking names out of a hat. And that's how I find credibility, and that's how I find guys that I want. Now, the guys inside the DFS Army, we have all different kinds. We have guys that are great at cheat sheets. We have guys that are great at discussing things in depth with you. We have guys with all different skill levels and all different teaching styles. But the fact of the matter is we're all here to help you, and you're going to have to do the work of answer, asking the questions and pulling that information out of us because we don't necessarily know where to start. We don't know if you're brand new to the game or if you've been around for a few years, if you play for thousands of dollars a night or $10 a night. We don't know. What we know is that we have done a lot of research and we can help you learn these processes and these tools. And I've told people the basic thing that I do these days is the first thing I would start, let's use KBO just for example. I'll go to the research station, right? And the first thing that I'm going to do when the research station loads up is let's find some hitting targets. Let's find some stacks. Baseball is baseball, right? I'm going to come right down here to today's stacks and click on that, that little tab there. And I'm going to start looking for, for me, who has high WOBAs and who has high ISOs as teams. I'm not, IRT is great, but I'm not worried about that kind of stuff. That stuff's going to show up in green. Green is generally good. Red is generally bad. And I'm not going to dive too deep into things yet. I'm just looking for who are the teams that are in the good spots, who are the teams that are typically producing. And then I might even open one up. And I might look down at the players. Who's playing the games? Who's got the WOBA and ISO? You know, that gets, like I mentioned in a previous video, over about 600. 400 for WOBA is elite. 200 for ISO is elite. WOBA and ISO together kind of double dip on power, which is everything thing in baseball and allows you to determine who's getting on base, who's doing the damage, and who's doing the damage with thump. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm going to find those players in this team, and if that's a team that I want to stack tonight or a team I want some exposure to in an MME-type format tonight, I'm going to then look harder into those teams, into that stack, and find those players. And those players are going to form a core of that stack for that team. And that was very, very easy in this tool. The next thing that I would do is I would go into KBO and I would look up cheat sheets. You probably won't see them populated now. We'll probably go back to an earlier version when it loads up. Let's go into the archive since those cheat sheets aren't up yet. And let's go back to, I don't know, last Friday for whatever reason. That's an, a VIP access situation where now you can see what we've done in the past and how it panned out. And I can see, you know, pitchers and I can see hitters that are rated as all format plays, value plays, GPP plays, core plays, whatever. What is a core play? A core play is the coach's recommendation. You should start here. This is a phenomenal play. It's either mispriced or it's a stud in a matchup or it's whatever. This is a great price. And then I'm going to look this core play, the next core play, whatever. And those might be guys that I boost in our optimizer or our projections or that I might build a team stack around. If they all land you know, on do here, then I'm probably stacking do. Right. So these are the ways I'm but I'm going to make sure that these are the players that I'm also seeing in my entry level research. When I go through the research station, am I also landing on these plays? If the answer is yes, then I'm probably on the right track. I'm doing what some of these experts are doing. Therefore, I should be getting the same types of results these experts are getting. Now, there are some individualized things like game theory and this guy decided to fade the chalk or attack, whatever. That's all stuff you can talk about and you can learn inside our forums, too. But this is what I'm looking for. OK, and then now that I'm starting to see that my research is matching up their research, I can either ask some finer point questions and really get the discussion going, or I can just run with it into the optimizer. And when I run with it into the optimizer, I go into the KBO domination station. And if projected lineups are in there for tonight, that'll be awesome because that will allow me to then load up under the baseball section. Give me a thank you. Give me a projected slate. I come down in here. And now I can play with these tools because I have an idea in my head already of who my players are, who the coach's players are, who I like, and who I might want to attack. Let's just say I wanted to attack with Lot and KTW tonight, right? I wanted to fade Dew because they're probably the chalk. So I'll come down here. I might set up, say, 20 lineups or so for DraftKings. I might have a few unique players in here. The tighter my unique pool is, the, the more similar my lineups are going to be top to bottom. The wider I spread that bad boy out, the more it's going to spread out. If I force different players in there and I'm going to land on widely different uh, combinations, randomness, 
juggles up those uh, those projections pretty good. If I put it on 25 or 40 or 50 or 10 or whatever, it doesn't really matter, but I'm shuffling up those projections a little bit. If a player has a projection of 10, a randomness of 25 will vary him anywhere between 7.5 points and 12.5 points because I set the random uh, optimization or the random projection number in there to kind of shake that up. That from run to run to run, lineup to lineup to lineup, is going to generate a 7.5, 7.8, 12.2, 11.7, .7, whatever. And that's going to bring a different value number that's going to push that guy into or out of lineups or into or out of stacks accordingly. And it's going to mix things up a little bit. And in a random sport like a baseball, I want things mixed up. In a less random sport like a NBA, I might mix things up less violently. This is really throwing them in the Powerball machine and shaking them up. I might just gently roll dice in my hands with NBA and kind of mix them a little bit, but I'm always going to get a little bit of a mix. I'm going to switch probably down to tournament mode because that even mixes the ownership projections. It's not going to give me, yeah, I want 20% of XYZ player. It's not going to give me you know, the first, say, 20% of 20 lineups is four lineups. It's not going to be, he's not going to be in all four of those first four lineups. He's going to be maybe in lineup one, lineup three, lineup seven, lineup 12. He's going to mix him around a little bit as it goes. And now I'm kind of set up. If I wanted to come down here, I could play with stacks in the randomized setting. I could play with them in the other settings. If I wanted just a standard three by three stack, you want a quick stack, you want a three by three, you want, say, 10% on a lot of these other teams, but, you know, I'm working in the dark here a little bit, so I apologize. If I picked about 30% here and about 30% here, and who, I said KTW. So if I'm just kind of punching these numbers in as I go, and I said fade do, so let's say I don't want any do stacks at all. Now, I don't know if this is going to add to 100% or not, but this is one way to do it. And from here, you're going to get, what, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then 90. So I'm going to have to back that down some. Otherwise, the optimizer won't run. And let's take lot out of it and put them back down at 10%. Hopefully, that's about 30%. That's about 100%, whatever. It's heavily stacked on Kia and KTW here. I know that wasn't what I originally said, but for speed, I'm just trying to make something happen. We have two different... We have controlled stacks, which allow you to pick specific players. We have a new stacking approach, which allows even more finely tuned information or control on your end. If I wanted to narrow things down to just the top seven hitters, I can uncheck these boxes. If I want the top six hitters, I can uncheck those. But when I'm ready, I'm just going to hit run. And as the lineup uh, optimizer starts cranking, it's going to give me 30% Kia, 20% KTW stacks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's going to stack other people. You know, I guess this could have added up to 200%, being 100% here and 100% here. So I wasn't thinking in the middle of making the video. But as I scroll down and look at the look at the lineups that it's producing now, after 20 lineups are produced, I can make sure that KIW, KTW, KTW, lot, lot, lot. There's three lot players, three by three stack, right? And three KTW players, right? And the KTW players are one, five, four. That's a decent top of the order stack. KTW is one, or I'm sorry, lot one, three, five, again. So we've got decent stacks coming in in the tops of the orders that are likely to do damage. If I look over here on the player side of things and I see catchers and I wanted more of, you know, Dong Wan Park here, I would change his product is I would change his uh, projection, or I could give him a minimum exposure of 20%. He'd pull into 20% of my lineups. If I wanted to adjust the projection here, instead of pulling into 50% of the lineups, if I jump him up to, say, 12 points, he might pull into 80% of my lineups. I can start controlling individual players through here. So not only am I controlling stacks and stack sizes and stack depth, I'm controlling the players and their projections and what I want them to appear in my mixture of lineups. Once I have a game plan formulated where I really like this team. I really like to attack the slate from this direction. With this stack, I like these players around the league. I'm going to boost their projections so they end up in more of my lineups. Now, it sounds complicated, but once you get a routine down where you have identified those players, you've mixed them into your lineups, and now you're starting to just cram these things into the optimizer. You let the optimizer do the shuffling for you when you're making more than one lineup. 
You can do this for three lineups. You can do this for 150 lineups. It doesn't really matter. But the more you practice, the better you get at knowing which little tweaks are going to cause which disruptions in these lineups. And now you're going to have a tool that you can use at your disposal to be very, very competitive without a ton of research, hours and hours of research in MMA, PGA, NBA, baseball, hockey, whatever NFL sports you want to play. You can play a lot of these different sports at one time. You can start to diversify your bankroll across different sports. You've got the experts putting you on good plays. You've got the experts willing to teach you how to land on those good plays. And you've got the optimizers and the cheat sheets and the tools designed to help you verify your own research, discussion points in our Slack forums, strategy discussions to help you think about leverage and exploitation and other things, as well as an optimizer to assemble those lineups and push them into contests where you now have a fighting chance. More so than the recreational player who's building his lineups by hand, or more so than the guy who doesn't have access to a community like ours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is your advantage. This is your edge. If you're curious, you need to come inside. We've got free offers. I'll put that link down there in the description as well. And you can take a look at signing up for a site like Superdraft, completely different scoring, but we smash that website as well because we have actually fewer sharks over there, more overlay in contests, and that's leading our players to easier money every single day. So these are the types of things you need advice on, you need to talk to us, you need to ask us questions. I'm just seeing a theme today in our new members signing up. I want to get this message to them as well as to you out in the public because this is sort of like the second start or the second opportunity for your DFS career coming out of this COVID-19 pandemic. So get your foot on, you know, get the right feet on the ground or hit the ground running, whatever it is that you want to say, and just start learning from the guys that have been doing it for years. We're willing to teach you. We're willing to spend the time with you and talk to you until you get these concepts under your own belt. And then you can put your own little wrinkles in them and start unlocking $20,000 like Sniper did in soccer, $40,000 like uh, you know, like the MMA contest last week, another $70,000 like Beavis did back in uh, March in NASCAR, and all of the other sports that we do, including a million-dollar winner, Bobby Wild, week three last year, NFL, won the Millie Maker on DraftKings, and we've had we, uh, we're over 20 guys that have won over $100,000 in a single contest in our history. We have a phenomenal track record. We have phenomenal coaches. We have phenomenal information and tools now all at your disposal for one flipping price. Stop missing the boat. Get in here. Give us a shot. Let us work with you and let us help you become a better player. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you soon.